Hi, my name is Kim Gilbert and I'm with the Upper Thames River Conservation Authority. And my name's Alexis Stupich and I'm with the Upper Thames River Conservation Authority as well. Kim and I will be taking you on a series of different hikes throughout London and the surrounding area to explore some of the beautiful natural habitats and ecosystems that we have here right close to home. Hi, we're at Westminster Ponds Environmentally Significant Area here in London, Ontario. The Westminster Ponds Environmentally Significant Area, or ESA, is the largest ESA in the City of London. It's made up of five different ponds, and today we're going to be walking around just one of them, the Saunders Pond. Right on the side of the trail, we found in these dogwood bushes here, a lovely little bird nest. So if you look inside, it's made in almost a cup shape and that's designed to keep the bird nice and safe and keep the eggs cared for. Now, we can tell by looking inside, we see snow and the nest is kind of starting to fall apart. We can tell that the nest hasn't been used lately, but it would have been used in other times, maybe by a finch or another small bird. So here we have a plant called teasel. And teasel, um, in the summertime, it comes out in very pretty rings of purple flowers. And as you can see in the wintertime, it looks much different. And if you were to touch these little spikes here, you would find that they're a little bit pokey. Um, and uh, it's actually kind of useful. Back in history, in the pioneer times, people would take these teasels and they would use them to comb out the wool at times and so it was kind of a useful tool back in the pioneer days and it is a very special plant that um, that of course bees will come and pollinate as well and uh, get the nectar from and uh, yes yeah, so it's all part of a, a natural landscape as you can see here behind me Behind me is Saunders Pond. This is one of the five ponds in the Westminster Ponds ESA. Right now, this pond is completely frozen over and covered in a thick layer of snow. Now, this really neat area was actually formed thousands and thousands of years ago. About 13,000 years ago, this area and all of Southern Ontario was covered in a really thick glacier or a big piece of ice that was several kilometers thick. Eventually, as the weather started to warm up, the huge sheet of ice started to melt and it began to shift and crack. And as it did that, it broke off into large, large pieces. And as the weather started warming up even more, those big chunks of ice started to melt. And they melted exactly where, in this case, where Saunders Pond is. And it created a, a huge pond. And there are, as we've mentioned before, five ponds in this area that has uh, resulted from that melted glacial ice. Right beside me is a really important wetland species. This species right here is called a cattail, and it kind of looks almost like a fuzzy sausage on a stick. Now, the reason that these plants are so important is that they do a really, really good job at pulling pollution out of the water. So if you have cattails in a wetland or a creek, you know that they're pulling that pollution out and keeping our waters nice and clean. Here we have a tree um, called a white pine. Its uh, Latin name is Pinus strobus, and it is a coniferous tree. Um, a coniferous tree is a tree that has cones on it, and it also stays green all year long. 
It is Ontario's provincial tree and there is a couple of easy ways to identify a white pine from other coniferous trees that you might find in a forest. If you take the little bundles, you'll find that there are little clusters of bundles of these needles, or they're also called leaves, and they usually are in groups of five. And one easy way to remember that is by giving each of the needles a letter, and each letter will represent the word white, W-H-I-T and E. And when you find that out, then you know that you have a white pine tree. Right behind me is another species of tree that we have here in Ontario and this is called a red oak. Red oaks are a deciduous kind of tree which means that their leaves fall or the tree decides to lose its leaves every fall. Now the red oak is kind of unique because as you can see it still has some of its leaves even though it's a deciduous tree. So here we are, and I'm pretty excited to show you some signs of some animal uh, sighting here in uh, Westminster Ponds. So if we're looking down here along the, along the stem of this uh, bush, we can see that it's been chewed extensively. And, uh, and then if we look down even further, you'll be able to see uh, a few little remnants of something that we call scat. And scat is essentially the uh, animal droppings. and. Uh, knowing what these look like. They're little round brown balls of scat and the chewing on the bark that tells me that we've had a cottontail rabbit around here. And so that's kind of exciting to know that they are here and running around here in Westminster Ponds. This lovely plant beside me is called a goldenrod. We can identify a goldenrod at other times of year because this whole part up here where they have all the seeds right now is in the summertime covered in these beautiful little yellow flowers. There's something really interesting about this specific goldenrod and if you notice on the stem there's a big kind of round ball. It looks almost like a ping pong ball has been stuffed inside the stem. Now the reason that we have this is it's actually called a, a gall or G-A-L-L. -L. And it's formed when the goldenrod gall fly lays its egg inside the stem. So it lays its egg and it puts it right inside the stem. And as a reaction, the plant forms this really protective hard barrier around uh, the larva inside. So inside, there's that little egg that's been growing and it spends the winter there eating the inside of the goldenrod plant. And then in the spring, it will dig a hole out and out will fly a new goldenrod gall fly. So this is a very special and unique tree here for Westminster Ponds. This is a gigantic white oak tree and it's about 100 feet tall, um, 5 feet in diameter and it is uh, hundreds of years old, is so the story goes. So this tree has actually been a very special tree over uh, the last several hundred years for many groups of people. and uh, they people come from far and wide to admire it and to respect this tree.
were just trying to feed some birds on the side of the trail here and we had a number of chickadees come and kind of investigate, cut a little close. They didn't come right to our hands to feed from our hands this time, but we also had another visitor and that's a downy woodpecker right behind me. If you look very carefully in the trees, he's kind of hidden right now. Uh, this downy woodpecker is a beautiful bird. It's red on the back of his head and then black and white for the rest of him. He's one of our smaller woodpeckers. And you'll notice he goes from tree to tree to tree, pecking at the different uh, trees and looking for little insects and larvae inside the wood. Now, if you or I were to do that, we would probably get a headache. But woodpeckers, they're really designed for this. And their tongue actually goes and it wraps all the way around their brain so that it kind of acts as a cushion. What we have on this tree here is uh, a fungus and it's uh, it's basically called turkey tails and if you were to take a really good look at it you would notice every single individual one kind of fans out the same way that a male turkey uh, in the springtime does his tail fans out so that's what it resembles and uh, the host for this is usually a, a dead tree in the forest and so it's found the perfect tree obviously because it's uh, growing everywhere up and down this tree so it's a really good example of the turkey tail fungus. We were lucky enough to see two red tail hawks together in a couple of different trees and this is the time of year where they're thinking of nesting and so they're uh, spending some time together and hoping that uh, soon we'll have some uh, new red tail hawks in the area. So this box here right beside me is a nest box that's been built by our ESA or Environmentally Significant Area staff and it's been built to support extra nesting habitat for eastern bluebirds. We hope to see lots of eastern bluebirds which are a beautiful small bright blue colored bird in the next few months as the spring starts to warm up the temperatures and they come here looking for a place to lay their eggs. So in 2017, the City of London asked uh, St. William's uh, Nursery and Ecology Centre to come out and help to remove a very invasive uh, bush that we have growing in this area. It's called uh, buckthorn, common buckthorn. And so the Ecology Centre, they cleared out about four hectares of the invasive bush. And uh, this area was reforested, replanted with some lovely native trees and bushes. Um, so hopefully one day this area will uh, represent a nice mix of native uh, species. Alexis and I would like to thank you for coming out and joining us on our virtual hike here at Westminster Palms. We hope you'll join us next time as we explore another one of London's environmentally significant areas. Thanks! <laughs>